everyone, and welcome to the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke, and today is going to be a little bit different uh, of an episode. Obviously, you're just hearing my voice because I'm the only one recording. We didn't do a full episode this week. Our normal recording day, I absolutely felt like garbage. Um, Joe was exhausted from work, and we just decided, hey, we got a special episode coming next week. We're doing some uh, some different stuff. We're going to have a completely new person on the podcast. Uh, we're recording on uh, 420. So, you know, it, it should be an interesting, <laughs> fun episode. Um, and th- so this week I decided that I definitely would want to put something out. I don't want to skip a week um, unless absolutely necessary. So I figured I'd sit down. Uh, I have a bunch of sound recording software I got from Humble Bundle a couple weeks ago, and uh, I figured I might try and use some of it. So I've been kind of messing around here a little bit uh, with SoundForge Pro, and it's, I think, I'm doing it right. Uh, I have no idea, to be completely honest, but hey, as long as you're hearing my voice, then I know I've done something right. Hopefully this episode goes up to on Tuesday, normal day and time. I'm not really sure, because... Uh, it depends on how much editing, you know, if Joe has to do or I can figure out to do and how exhausted uh, either one of us is. But either way, we'll figure that out later. So what I wanted to talk about, a couple different topics. First of all, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen some of the news reports lately in Star Wars land, uh, but Mark Hamill has come out with some pretty um, I yeah disappointing um and I, I don't even i don't even mean disappointing in him uh more like he's being really honest with his feelings on the series right now and he said that he doesn't care about episode nine about being in it uh he's not he, he doesn't care he very much seems like he's not planning on being in episode nine uh, he mentions, you know, Carrie Fisher's unfortunately passing away, and it feel he doesn't want to feel like he's the only one coming back for this movie. Obviously, Han Solo is not going to come back. Um, I don't know if they could ever drag Harrison Ford back onto a Star Wars set, maybe. But uh, with Han Solo, without Harrison Ford, without um, Carrie Fisher, uh, Mark Hamill. Did I call him Luke Skywalker earlier? Man. Mark Hamill is, uh, he's done. He doesn't have the will in him anymore. And that's, that's really sad. You know, we've talked about episode eight ad nauseum. Uh, you guys know my feelings on that movie. Joe's feelings on that movie. Incredibly disappointed with that storyline. Uh, and I can't help but wonder if they had taken Luke Skywalker and taken that story in a different direction and Mark Hamill was even has mentioned he had tons of problems with the story uh, even before they started filming. Once it was done filming, the way he talked about the movie and press junkets and things like that, telling people uh, it's not what you expected. Um, Luke Skywalker's there. It's not my Luke Skywalker. I mean that that's that's fucked up. You know, this is his his character. He brought this character to life, and he doesn't even feel like it's his character anymore. And you take all of that, I can't help but wonder if that, on top of Carrie Fisher's passing, just set it over where he's done. Uh, and it sucks. And at the same time, you know, I can't. I don't blame him at all. Like uh, I, I don't really. I didn't really have any hope for nine anyway. I'm not. I'm not excited for it or anything. At most, I'm kind of glad J.J. Abrams is coming back. Um, Sort of. Like, at least it's not uh, the other guy. Because, man, fucking eight. But J.J. James was not really known for his um, finales. Uh, finishing up a story has never been his strong stoop. But the addition of that, plus not having Luke Skywalker, even as a Force ghost. I hate what they did in seven. Or, I mean, in, uh, in eight. And then to then not at least have him as a force ghost. And they're talking about having Yoda come back. Like, oh, maybe Yoda's coming back. That's great. Eh, that's cool. Like, that's all right. But I'd much rather see 
a Luke Skywalker Force ghost training Ray or having something. And I mean, in all actuality, it'd probably be a teeny tiny short scene. It'd be nothing that we would expect anyway, even if he had, had agreed to come back. So I don't know. I'm I'm uh, even less uh, excited for that movie now, which is really really saying something because Star Wars has always been one of those things that's like, man, it, I, I it, it's. I love Star Wars. I love that whole universe. But, hey, you know what? Sometimes things just don't work out the way we want it to. Uh, Ryan Johnson. That's it. That fucker. I don't know. He might be a great director. Like like I've said, I think there's a great st uh, space movie, science fiction movie in there. It's just unfortunate it ended up in my Star Wars. But anyway, another thing I wanted to talk about more, because uh, I've talked about it a little bit. Uh, I've been playing Far Cry 5, but I've played enough of it that I can definitely say I go pick up this game. It's a great game. Um, I've had a lot of fun playing the game. The it, it, especially if you've liked the Ubisoft or <laughs> the Ubisoft games, the uh, Far Cry games in the past, uh, this is definitely my favorite. I think um, the characters. I will say the. The villains aren't quite as interesting as Vass was in Far Cry 3, but y y that's like, that's absolute perfection. This is still really, really good. Uh, my only gripe with it that's become more and more apparent as I play more of it is the um, rebel system or uh, 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 rebellion system they have, where the more st actions you do, the more quests you do the higher this bar goes, and each time it hits a certain point, you get pushed into a scripted section. Which, don't get me wrong, Ubisoft's writers, the guy, the people writing Far Cry's scripted sections are amazing. However, when you're playing an open world game like this, and I'm more like, oh shit, I want to go see what's up on that mountain. Oh hey, there's a, a VIP. I'm going to shoot him in the head real quick, and then I'll go see what's on the mountain. And instead, you're pulled into a psychedelic um, like, vision quest type thing, and then you wake up from that, like, you're done with that quest 40 minutes later, and you're somewhere completely different on the map, and you're like, oh, all right, well, fuck, I guess I gotta go back over there and try and find that thing again. It's a little frustrating. Um, it became more frustrating when those, uh, the ending of the, the, I guess, uh, lieutenants, or whatever they're called, uh, once you fill the rebellion meter up, or whatever the hell it's called, um, you're almost forced to go and deal with them. Actually, specifically forced with one of them. Um, but you don't have to completely finish it on uh, on two of them. I think with uh, the uh, hope, not hope, faith. I think you do have to go all the way through when her area is cleared when you're done, which is a little frustrating because it doesn't like eliminate your side quests and things like that in the area, but the amount of patrols of enemies are... I don't know if they're completely gone, but they're way less. Uh, so if, like me, you don't have the achievement for shooting down five aircraft in a plane, which fuck the ever-loving hell out of the plane controls in this game. They're fucking garbage. Anyway, if you don't have that achievement, it becomes really hard to get when you are flying around trying to find an enemy plane for fucking ever, and it's not either not spawning or it's being shot down by NPCs or whatever. So that's a little frustrating. Um, so, but still, all in all, it's a great game. I haven't gone to the very end yet because I do know that when you do that, you can't go back and do those side quests that... Uh, are still available in the different lieutenants regions, and I still have two regions where I didn't. I did like the first set of side uh, of uh, quests in their regions, but I didn't do any of the like outside characters, like uh, Herc's dad, the senator. I, I haven't done his <laughs> specific quests yet. Um, there's another character who's like this uh, uh, yoga instructor dude, you know, Namaste. Like, and I haven't done the, like his stuff yet. And it's like, oh yeah, I want to do that. But there's also forts I haven't taken over. And uh, while you, you know, like I said, you can still do that. I like the challenge of random enemies can show up while I'm doing uh, these quests or I'm taking out a fort and stuff. So yeah, little frustrations here and there, but all in all, uh, definitely a great game. 
I don't I don't know about number what ratings shit fuck that we give. Uh a show and I joked about doing fucking uh seven I don't remember what it was, fucking seven out of five? Fucking some weird nah, some old meme, I don't even know it. I'd give the game like an eight and a half, nine out of ten. It's fun as hell. Good pretty good story. So yeah, that pick it up if you haven't. Uh if you're at all interested in the game. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, uh, real quick, well, as quick as I'm going to be, because I ramble, but, uh, if you are inclined to see a decent, or like a really good suspense movie, go see A Quiet Place. Or if you like monster movies, go see A Quiet Place. That movie was fucking awesome. Uh, I just, I, I was actually going to see Ready Player One, and I got to the movie theater, like, 10 minutes after it started, and I'm the kind of person that I want to be there before I want to get in my seat before even the um, fucking uh, trailers start. So I was like, all right, you know what? I wanted to see A Quiet Place too. I heard good things. So I went and saw that, and yes, fucking awesome monster movie, suspenseful as hell. Um, hit all the buttons that freak me out in movies, in uh, like the fiction and stuff. I fucking aliens freak me the fuck out. Um, and just monsters that are, like, just absolutely, uh, vicious as fuck. It's, like, it's got this whole, um, humans are no longer the top of the food chain type thing. So, it was really, it, it was, it was a cool fucking movie. Uh, it'll scare, it should scare the shit out of you. Or, at the very least, it's very, very suspenseful. Uh, if you don't know, the basic plot of it is... Humanity's kind of fucked. There's this family. They're the focus of the movie. Uh, they're monsters, but the monsters hunt by sound. They have really super sensitive hearing, so if you make any noise, they basically show up within, like, 30 seconds and tear you limb from limb and probably devour you and all that horrible shit. Um, the intro of the movie, like, the just the first 20 minutes of the movie is just you're sitting there like, okay, kind of getting a feeling for it. All right, and then bam! Oh my god, what the fuck? Like, it's it's really cool. Uh, the monsters look awesome. The uh, sound design in the movie is so amazing. It's it's like uh, it's not the same, but it's it gave me the similar like how excited I am for it, and how much how impressed I am, and how much I love it is similar to Baby Driver, the way they used music. Uh, the way they use sound in this is super interesting. Where, I mean, majority of the movie is quiet. Like, really, really quiet. Because if you're not quiet, the monsters come and fucking eat your face. So, there are times where all you hear is just, like, the light breathing of the characters. Like, you hear, like, little teeny squeaks of their feet. Nobody's wearing shoes because shoes make more noise than bare feet. Unless you're playing PUBG. Um, like, they do things that you start, I started noticing where in their farm, there's no doors. They've taken the doors off because obviously if you shut a door, that's loud, squeaking at door hinges. Uh, they have, like, they have their steps marked. So it's like, you, you know, step here, there's no creak and stuff. And there's, there's these little things. Um, and then there's parts of the movies where sound comes in real fast and real heavy. It gets loud and it kind of, it's jarring, but in a really interesting, awesome way that, uh, yeah, it was, it's definitely a boss fucking movie that totally go check it out. Um, I think the, the, the aliens are interesting. They're a little bit, uh, not deus ex machina, but it's like they fit what they have to be. They have to be basically invulnerable uh, to harm. And then, you know, they're super fuck here and show up and kill anything. But, you know, you don't really get the full story of like, you know, what happened to the military, what happened to everyone else. Um, there's little bits of information on like magazines in the background that you see, that you can kind of see, like, uh, uh, where they found, oh, how did they figure out it's sound? There's a magazine that, it's sound, and, I don't know, it's, it's a really cool movie. So, go see it. Don't take the kids, or take the kids. Uh, maybe shut the hell up <laughs> before you get a minute of peace. Uh, I mean, it was, it was 
fucking walking out of that movie theater and then every you know you hear everything in the world it's like whoa man it was cool it was definitely uh definitely a movie i'd recommend um you know uh what else do we have this week so if you go online and if you follow some of the different U- the YouTube channels that I follow, or if you read, I'm sure somebody, like Kotaku or IGN, or somebody's probably put up an article by now, but maybe not. They tend to avoid this kind of shit like the plague. Uh, you may have heard of this thing called Bully Hunters. And it's something where I think I'm going to wait to talk about it with Joe and our buddy Matt next week uh, when we do that episode in depth. But uh, it's... Basically, like, whoever came up with this, obviously, the one, they don't have a concept of how video games really work and how online interactions work, and they don't know how the internet will respond to things because everything about this was just stupid. So what it is, if you don't know, it's this idea that uh, if someone is being harassed, specifically a woman, uh, I'm assuming that they didn't mean it to be just for women, but maybe it is. Uh, that they can then call this group called the Bully Hunters, who will come in to the game they're playing, find the person who's doing the harassment, specifically they mention sexual harassment, and they they throw up some really wrong and terrible numbers to back their case up, which have been fucking like shot down immediately by people on Twitter and different people in the industry that know you're lying, those are fake numbers. But in any case, they come in, they find the harasser, they kill them, and then they say, uh, bullying is uh, bullying is wrong, bullyhunters.com. And it's like, okay, in th- so what you're really doing is you're putting a, a digital hit on somebody. But, you like... Uh, that aside, it's all this thing about harassment, which I'm a proponent of if someone's being an asshole and you don't want to hear their voice anymore, there's a great mute function on every, like, video game that I've played. And that's not excusing people, like, especially sexual harassment. If you're going to be an asshole online, whatever, you're going to talk shit during a video game. I know in my past I was a little asshole on Xbox Live. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not proud of it. Um... I look back on that, and there are some things, like, some parts where I do laugh, and I'm like, yeah, that was fun, uh, when I'm, you know, just mocking somebody playing the game, but there's at a point where it becomes childish, and when you're talking about somebody's mother and stuff like that, it's, it's, you're being shitty, and I get that, um, I'm all for trash-talking games, though, but this is specifically, like, they're not wrong on the harassment, that's fucked up. Uh, but that's what mute is for. That's what reporting people for harassment is for. Granted, that doesn't always solve a problem. Those options are still there. This system, uh, it's like it, it's harassing a harasser almost. Um, I don't know if they plan on it, it having the bully hunter come in and then just f- grief the fuck out of this person. They specifically use CSGO. So, like, they kill the person one time and don't be a dick and that's it, which I don't get. Like, that's no one who is that much of an asshole online is going to take that and respond with, wow, I should rethink the way that I carry myself in life. It's just that's that's not going to happen. Um, I So I don't get that. Like, in all honesty, this isn't the first time that I've heard of, like, a digital hit being put out. But uh, the, the, it was a funny case of a guy in China who was sick and tired of his son playing video games for too long. And I want to say that it was WoW, but it was de- maybe not WoW, but it was definitely an MMO. Because he hired these guys who were higher level and better at the video game to join, uh, like get on the same server or play the game uh, the, the, where his son played the game. And just harass, kill him over and over and grief him to get him to stop playing the game so much. That, to me, is funny. Um, if that's where you want to go with this, if it's like something like that, um, I'm, not, I'm not pro that, but at the same time, you're, that's going to get you better results. Uh, it's still kind of shitty, especially if you're ruining someone's game experience. But if you do it and every time you tell them, stop fucking talking like shit to women, stop being a sexualizing douchebag, 
uh, I mean, you know, it kind of might work. Who knows? But in the case of, like, CSGO, that's just not how the game is played. Um, I could maybe see it, like, if you're playing ca the casual mode of CSGO, people can join in and out of games, but that doesn't work on uh, if you're playing um, competitively, the, the, the like, for ranks and stuff. So I don't know what their... I, I honestly, it sounds like it was somebody, whoever came up with it, pitched it to somebody who had no idea about video games, and they went, yeah, we could do something with this. And I know there's, um, fuck, I can't remember the manufacturer, there's some shitty fucking headphones involved that are branded with it, which is obviously a fucking money-grabbing thing. They're saying it's going to be donated to anti-bullying, anti-online bullying things. It's like, you, just everything about it is just stupid. It's a dumb idea. The execution was terrible. Um, they did a live, and I use quotations, demonstration, which um, they totally acted that it was real. They, after getting all the bullshit, after getting, like, it can't, you know, was proven to be fake. And it's fake as fuck. It looks fake. Like, it's, it's bad. Uh, and then people found out that the person who called for help uh, also was the person who was the bully hunter. Uh, even more so, it's, well, fuck, obviously it's fake. After being called out, they're like, well, we never said it was real. Uh, but in that demonstration, it's like, but how, what happens if the bully hunter's not as good as that fucktart? And they just get killed over and over. Do they call another bully hunter? Like, I don't understand what the point is. I think you would be even, and I don't want to suggest this, dude, it's also shitty, but you'd be better off just fucking spamming the person with messages of don't be a bully, bullyhunter.com, don't be a bully, like, fill their fucking uh, Steam inbox or whatever with fucking, not hate mail, but, you know, don't be a douchebag mail. But at the same time, then that doesn't really help anything, and that's a shitty thing to do, too. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really dumb system. Um... Just really, they no thought, I think. Well, I'm sure they put some thought into it, but it, it turned out. There's also all this stuff about uh, the, the people involved saying they're going to file DMCA strikes against anyone who uses their likenesses or footage from it, which obviously is you know illegal if you're filing a fake uh, claim. So they've kind of had to roll that back and say, oh, well, only if it's misused. It's it's this whole, oh, man, this whole situation is funny. It's a stupid idea. Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Uh, I mean, like I said, the only I can only see this working in something like WoW. And even then, at the same time, like a dedicated PvP server where you're constantly PvP, uh, and it really wouldn't surprise me if you could, like, find a high-level, like, a max-level person or a max-level group of people and say, hey, this dude's being an asshole. Can you just kill him? Here's 50 gold or a thousand gold. they probably do it over and over for you. Like, fuck. I don't know. So, I don't know. It's it, it's comedy. It's To me, it's funny to see this on the internet. Uh, I, I, I want to talk to Joe, talk with Joe about that more because, man, the bully hunter system. <laughs> what a fucking joke. Uh, so the last thing, I think the last thing, can't think of anything else right now, but the last thing, uh, uh, and I hate to say, uh, end this on a sad note, um, uh, one of my heroes passed away yesterday. Uh, if you've not read the news, Arlie Ernie, uh, the gunny, the um, uh, drill instructor from... Um, Full Metal Jacket, he was, uh, he had shows on the History Channel. Um, my favorite show he was on was called Mail Call. He passed away yesterday in, I believe, in the morning. Uh, yesterday being uh, Sunday. So if you're hearing this on Tuesday, two days ago. Uh, which, that that did hit me hard. Uh, I mean, I remember, like I said, watching Mail, Mail Call when I was a kid with my dad. Um, like every night back when the History Channel was good, we would sit down and watch it. I, I remember like, it, I didn't even have my own computer with internet, so I'd have to get my dad's permission and go to his computer, which was in his chiropractic office, which I shouldn't have even been in, 
uh, and we would sit down and go to their website and then send uh, emails and you know I'd ask questions, uh, send an email or trying to get my question read on air and stuff like that and it just really it really sucks because he he was uh, he was an act, like an awesome actor. He did voice acting. He was the uh, uh, army man in Toy Story. And I actually, I think in the first two or all three Toy Story or four Toy Story movies, I know, I know he was the sergeant there, uh, and he was just an awesome guy overall. Um, I, I mentioned before, I'm in. I, I like firearms. I like learning about military stuff, and he was always uh, in that firearm community. I think he was a promoter for Glock, if I'm not mistaken. I could be completely wrong there, but I know he did shows and things for that. Uh, and just an all-around awesome guy, um, and you know it, it sucks that he passed away. We really uh, we lost a legend, but you know uh, either way, definitely um, rest in peace, Gunny. All my respect for him. Uh, uh, and I mean, he was a Marine too. He's not wasn't faking it in Full Metal Jacket. He was a Marine. He was a drill instructor. He you know he trained soldiers and sent them to Vietnam. And he's done. You can see interviews where he talks about that, and that you know he doesn't know he didn't know what was going to happen. All he could do was try and prepare those guys, you know, for combat and hope that they made it back. But uh, uh, he's a legend. He'll definitely be missed. But that's, I think, all we got today, guys. Um, like always, check us out on Facebook. Give us a review on iTunes. Check out our Patreon if you care. Uh, check out our Discord server. We're talking in there sometimes. It's pretty small right now, but, you know, we have some good conversations once in a while. Uh, so, anyway, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Luke. And I hope you guys have a good one. Peace out.